In this video, I'm briefly going to review the characteristics of the common emitter amplifier, the common base amplifier, and the common collector amplifier. So the amplifier that we have here is the common emitter amplifier. Why is it called that? Well, the input is applied to the base of the transistor. The output is taken from the collector of the transistor, but the emitter is actually common to both the input circuit and the output circuit. So it's called the common emitter amplifier. So this is RC, that's RE, the emitter resistance. R1 and R2 form a voltage divider. C1 and C2, they're used to block the DC signals, but allow AC to pass into and out of the circuit. CB is the bypass capacitor. It bypasses the emitter resistor. So it allows the AC signal to bypass RE. And RL is the load resistor. So one feature of the common emitter amplifier is its ability to invert the signal at the input. So if the input looks like this, the output signal is going to be amplified, but it's going to be shifted by 180 degrees. Now, some characteristics of the common emitter amplifier is that it has a mid-range voltage gain, and it also has a mid-range current gain. Another advantage of the CE amplifier is that it has a high power gain. Now, there's two other characteristics of the common emitter amplifier that you need to be aware of. It also has a mid-range input impedance and also a mid-range output impedance. So those are some of the characteristics of the CE amplifier. And now let's move on to the common base amplifier. So like before, we're going to have our input signal and we're going to have a capacitor. But this time, the input signal is applied to the emitter of the transistor. The base is common both to the input circuit and the output circuit. So thus, this is called the common base amplifier. So that's the load resistor, RL. And then we're going to have a resistor going towards VCC, the collector supply voltage. So this is the base of the transistor. This is the emitter. And this is the collector. So this is RC. And then we do have another resistor, which goes towards negative VEE. So that voltage is actually lower than the ground voltage. It's negative with respect to the ground voltage. So that's the circuit for the common base amplifier. Now some characteristics of the common base amplifier is that it has a mid-range voltage gain, which is very similar to the common emitter amplifier. So both the common base and the common emitter amplifier has a mid-range voltage gain. However, the common base amplifier has a low current gain. In fact, the current gain is slightly less than 1. Now the common base amplifier has a low input impedance. So I'm just going to write low Z in, basically low input impedance. But it does have a high output impedance. 
So those are some of the characteristics of the common base amplifier. Comparing that to the common emitter amplifier, which has a mid-range input and output impedance. Now let's talk about the input and output signal. So if our input signal looks like this, the output signal for the common base amplifier that is across the load resistor, it's not going to be inverted. So there's no phase shift for this particular uh, circuit. Now let's move on to the next one. That is the common collector amplifier. So first we need our input signal. And then we're going to have a capacitor. Two resistors, very similar to the common emitter amplifier. This circuit actually looks very similar to the common emitter amplifier. But notice that the output is taken not from the collector, but from the emitter. So this is the load resistor. So the output is across the load resistor. Notice that we don't have RC in this circuit. So the collector is common to both the AC signal at the input and also at the output as well, because an AC signal can easily go through the battery and come through the ground because the battery doesn't really provide much resistance to an AC signal. This is going to be R1, that's R2, and they form a voltage divider at the base of the NPN transistor. So that's the common collector amplifier circuit. Now let's talk about the characteristics that describe this particular circuit. So the common collector amplifier has a mid-range current gain. We saw that the common base amplifier had a mid-range voltage gain. And the common emitter amplifier had both a mid-range voltage and current gain. Now the voltage gain for the common collector amplifier is low. It has a very low uh, voltage gain. The voltage gain is slightly less than 1. Now as for the input impedance, it has a high input impedance, but a low output impedance, which is good for an amplifier. You want an amplifier to have a high input impedance and a low output impedance. Now the reason for this is straightforward. It's because if you have a high input impedance and a low output impedance, the actual power gain is going to be close to the maximum theoretical power gain. In the common base amplifier, we saw that it had a low input impedance, but a high output impedance. This is not ideal because the actual gain of the circuit will typically be significantly less than the theoretical gain of the circuit. So if you wish to maximize the gain of an amplifier, Ideally speaking, you want a high input impedance at the input. You want a high impedance at the input. Let me say that again. But a low impedance at the output if you wish to achieve maximum gain. Now let's talk about the power gain of the, the three amplifiers that we've considered so far. So for the common emitter amplifier, we said it had a high power gain. The power gain is the product of the voltage gain and the current gain. So let's look at 
the common emitter amplifier. Let's say that the voltage gain is 100. It has a mid-range voltage gain, and the current gain is 100. So this would be a power gain of 10,000. Now for the common base amplifier, we said that it has a mid-range voltage gain. So we're going to say 100 for that, but a low current gain. Slightly less than 1, but we're going to go with 1. The power gain will be 100. So the CB amplifier has a mid-range power gain. In the case of the common collector amplifier, the voltage gain is slightly less than 1. And the current gain is mid-range, so that's going to be 100. So therefore, the common collector amplifier has a mid-range power gain. So as you can see from these numbers, one significant advantage of the common emitter amplifier is that it has a high power gain. So this is useful if you wish to use it as a power amplifier. Nevertheless, the maximum theoretical efficiency of the common emitter amplifier is 25%. So let's say that the circuit draws 10 watts of power from the DC source. The maximum output power for the common emitter amplifier will be 2.5 watts of AC power at the output. So this amplifier does have limitations. It's also known as a Class A amplifier. Class A amplifiers have a maximum theoretical efficiency of 25%, but a Class B amplifier, which is different, it uses two transistors, it has a maximum theoretical efficiency of 78.5%. So there's a lot of different types of amplifiers out there, um, but if you're looking for an amplifier with a very high power gain, you need to research the Class B amplifier.